Greetings and salutations. Welcome back to another Rust video. Today we're going to be having a look at the knee capacitor and the configure siphon and a few little tricks that we can use. To start off with, we're going to look at the knee capacitor. So what we have here is our power generation and then we're going to stabilize that with a battery and put it into our root combiner. Now we'll just reset the circuit by disconnecting it. It does get reset every time the server restarts or it gets disconnected. But as you can see, it's just starting to store up the power in our little capacitor loop here, which essentially is being done through this mic stand into the splitter back into our root combiner. Now all the magic really happens here in our mic stand where the power in is being converted into an audio out signal which tricks the root combiner into not thinking there's a short circuit. And now from this root combiner we can branch out our load at the moment it's set to 2 which is enough to power this light here but for example you wanted to uh, Turn on some Tesla coils, for example. You can just set the power required there and off they go. And it'll start draining from the capacitor. As you can see, it's already drained out. There wasn't much charge set up in the capacitor. So we'll set it back to two. And as you can see now, it's back to charging up the capacitor slowly but surely. But obviously it's not practical for you if you wanted to turn on those Tesla coils to go walk in and change that power branch amount. Uh, you're gonna want that to happen automatically. So we're gonna look over here at the configure siphon. Now what the configure siphon is gonna allow us to do is conditionally divert power away from our capacitor. So here we have the power going into the memory cell and it's got two paths to go, the red path, or the blue path. And to change which path the uh, power is being sent through, we have these buttons set up. So if we press the uh, reset button, which is what it's currently set to, it'll go through the red path. Or if we press the blue button, it's gonna go over to the blue path. So we can just toggle that back and forth as we like and any uh, extra power gets sent through to the uh, OR switch to be used further on in the circuit. Now, while the buttons are great, we want to automate this process. So we're going to use, in this example, a conveyor, but you can use like HBHF sensors, laser detectors. There's a bunch of different ways you can use to automate the, uh, the triggering of the memory cell set and reset inputs. Now. Here we're going to have a look at our example more in depth. We can see that the set of the uh, memory cell is attached to the filter pass of the conveyor and the reset is attached to the filter fail. So that means that when we put some ore in, it's gonna trigger over to the set side, which is the blue side of the circuit, which is turning on the lights and it's passing on the residual power through to the ore switch. Now, if we take the ore back out of the conveyor, it's gonna to fail which is going to reset and set it back to the red side which passes the power straight to the or switch anyway thanks for watching today's video we'll see you in the next one cheers